Hello and welcome to Adepicos Online. We're looking at module four, performance of the overall learning journey of how to lead. And we're looking at step three, measuring success. It's important for leaders to measure success so that they can understand how well they're pursuing the goals. Without the ability to measure success, how do you know how successful you are being? And that's very clear in football. In football, we can see whether a team wins or not. Of course, we can look at the score. But how do we know how well a team has been doing over a long period of time? How can we make sure how well each player is playing individually? The way that we do that is by measuring the performance of the players and of the team in general. And that enables us to understand a great picture of the overall team. Exactly how many games have they won? How many have they lost? How many, play how many goals has each player scored? How many tackles have they made? So on and so forth. By, gather by gathering this kind of data, we can understand a much richer picture of the overall situation. And that's why we can see Tom Peters' quote here, that what you do not measure, you cannot control. And this is crucial for a leader, because if you want to exert influence effectively, if you want to enable your people to work together to achieve the goal and to build the vision, then you need to have the numbers in place to make sure that you're actually making progress towards the goal. It's no use just relying on your gut instinct and I think we're going ahead with it. You need to have hard data in place to say, this is how successful we're being. This is how close we are to achieving our goals so on and so forth. An important part to recognize about that is that you get what you measure. So this was very famously said by Edward Deming. And what it means is that as a leader, when you set the task of saying, this is our goal and this is how we're going to measure it, then that's what people are going to create. So for example, you might say as a manager, I'm going to measure you and how many goals you score with the football team, and that's what I'm going to reward you for. Now, on the surface, that sounds great but you might end up with an unfortunate consequence, which is everyone decides to go and score goals. Your strikers, your defenders, your midfielders, and your goalkeeper. Now what this means is that you might score more goals, but you might also let in a lot more goals than you score yourself, and you still end up losing a lot. What I'm trying to show with this example is that you need to be very careful about what you specify as a goal or as a measure, because that's what you're gonna end up getting but that might come at the cost of the overall effectiveness of the team or organization. And that takes us to the final quote by William Cameron. Not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. So the first thing to say here is that this is commonly attributed to Albert Einstein. But as far as I can reveal during my research, no one can actually be sure that Einstein actually said it, and all the evidence actually indicates that a gentleman called William Cameron said it and said. So for now, I've attributed it to him. But the basic concept here is that a football team and a player is much more than just the data that represents them. We can't simply think of them as a bunch of numbers. We have to recognize that there's much more to the situation than the data that's being generated. And that's always important to bear in mind as a leader. You must use the data to enable you to make more effective decisions, but you must never confuse the data for the actual situation. So the first step for a leader is to identify what needs to be measured. Then, once you're clear about what it is that you're actually measuring, there are three things you need to do. You need to measure, monitor, and incentivize. So that means that you need to identify how well are you doing it, and then you need to regularly monitor how well your people are performing the task. And then finally, you need to incentivize people to do it. So for example, let's imagine that you're leading a sales team. Well, first of all, you need to measure how effective your sales team is. You need to say, we need to do $100,000 of sales per year. And then that means that you monitor on a month-by-month -month basis how successful they are being in pursuing that goal of $100,000. You can see that if you don't monitor their progress on a month-by-month -month basis, or even on a week-by-week -week basis, then there's a great danger that you won't be able to achieve the overall goal. And so in order to do that, you need to offer the right incentives. And this is typically a reward for delivering the great results. And using the sales team example, that would be a bonus. So if you say to people, if the sales team achieves its $100,000 sales target, then everyone gets a $2,000 bonus. So that's a nice, simple way of understanding what you need to do with metrics. Measure, monitor, and incentivize. And then the final principle is to make sure that you integrate the data into the decision making. There's no point generating lots of data if you don't actually use it to make effective decisions. And too often, companies and organizations are generating data, but they just simply file it away and never actually use it to make effective decisions. So make sure you integrate the data that you generate 
into the decision-making structures. So how do you go about generating useful metrics? Well, here's a simple three-step framework that you can use to help you lead your team. The first is clearly define what the goals are for the team. And there's three levels here. First, you should talk about what we should be doing. That's the ideal in the perfect world. Then you should be talking about what we could be doing. That's given the current reality, the current limitations, what can we actually deliver? What could we actually deliver? And then finally, there is what are we currently doing? What's the current situation? So to continue the sales team example, we should be doing $100,000, but given the limitations of not having enough staff and not having enough training and not having enough technology, we can only really actually deliver $50,000 at a maximum. And then if we look at what we're currently achieving as a team, what we're actually doing right now, that would be, for example, $25,000. So what this does is it builds an understanding of what the reality is in terms of the goals. The next step is to investigate how do we actually need, how do we actually create the goals? What does it take to make our goals happen? And this can be broken down into three concepts of time, effort, and resources. So time refers to how much time does it take for people to come together and deliver that goal. And you need to add up all the different sections that it takes to complete the goal. How much effort? This can be looked at how many people does it take and what particular skills does it take from people in order to make the goal a success and then finally resources how much extra money or other things do you need to put in such as training and knowledge in order to make it successful so using the sales team we could say for example to complete one sale it takes two weeks it takes three salespeople working together and it costs over a thousand dollars in terms of advertising and marketing so that's a simple way of understanding what it takes to achieve one of your goals and the next step is to make sure that you're measuring, monitoring, and incentivizing the sales team to do that. And we discussed that in the previous slide. So some great examples of organizations that use metrics for great success are the following. Tesco is a huge retailer based in the UK. And their phenomenal success is in part played by their invention of the Tesco Club Card. And what this does is it tracks the buying habits of all their customers. And what that means is it generates a huge amount of data about what the customers are buying on a day-by-day -day basis. And this enables the company to customize their offers and discounts for their customers as well as optimizing their supply chains. So that means that if you're buying lots of a particular type of orange juice, then Tesco can not only give you discounts on that particular type of, of orange juice customized just for you, but they can also adjust their supply chain to make sure that they have enough of that orange juice in stock based on your monthly buying habits. So that's a great example of a company using this to optimize their sales processes. Another company that does this really well is Amazon. So they have this great concept in which when you buy one thing, it will recommend to you another thing. For example, if you buy a Disney movie such as Toy Story, it will automatically re recommend to you Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3. And what this does is by connecting people's relationship and buying habits, it's able to generate greater sales because people will discover new things that they normally would not have thought about before. But it's not all about using metrics to be successful. And it's really important to understand that the pursuit of numbers just for the sake of numbers can lead you down a dark path. And, that, and unfortunately, a sad example of this is what happened with Stafford Hospital in the UK. So Stafford Hospital is part of the National Health Service. And the recent conclusion of a public inquiry was that hundreds of deaths could have been easily prevented if its management had not been so obsessed with money and with cutting uh, and hitting its targets. So we had situations where patients, for example, were not being admitted into hospital because by admitting them, it would affect the numbers of that hospital. Because if you admit more patients, then you're going to reduce, in increase your waiting time, for example. So they would literally just have patients lying in beds in the in the hospital gangways waiting to be treated rather than and but refusing to treat them because it would affect their overall numbers and performance and so this is obviously a horrific outcome and that's why it's really important to remember that as a leader the data is a tool that you use to make effective decisions it should never be an end in itself your goal as a leader is not to create 0.1 percent improvement or to deliver a 10 percent profit that should be an outcome of the overall situation of making things better. You should be building a great hospital, for example, which has healthy patients that are well looked after, as well as making sure that you can manage it effectively. And that's the challenge of leadership management, to be able to make such a difficult thing a reality. So let's have some practical advice on performance. 
The first is to make sure that you prioritize the gathering of credible data. What this means is not all data is equal. Just getting a bunch of random numbers together doesn't mean that you have the data you need to make effective decisions. You should form a habit of only making decisions when you have the right data. The reason for this is because if you make the wrong decision based on the wrong data, you actually often make things much worse than if you'd made no decision at all. So build the habit of making decisions only when you have good data that you trust. Secondly, keep it simple. There's no need to generate large amounts of data. You just need a few key measurements of the important processes to help you understand what's going on. And rather than just simply generating that data and filing it away in a drawer somewhere, you should make sure you integrate it into yours and your team's decision-making frameworks so that that data actually guides decision-making. Otherwise, there's no point in having that data. And then finally, remember that data can be used to evaluate how successful people are being. Sometimes it's necessary to be a bit firmer with people to say, listen, your goal was to, for example, sell 50,000, but so far you've only sold 10,000. Why is that? It's important to recognize here that you need to use the data to guide you in making effective decisions, not to dictate your decisions. The wrong approach would simply be to say to someone, you're not doing good enough, try harder. Because there might be a whole variety of reasons why that person is not able to deliver the goals. Maybe they don't have the training. Maybe they don't have the tools. Maybe there's factors beyond their control. For example, they might be selling poor quality products. So it's always important to use the numbers to drive decision making and particularly how you evaluate people but not to use it as the only criteria in which you work with your people. So in summary, metrics are essential for improving performance, but you must make sure that you use them regularly in order to guide effective decision-making. Use it as part of your decision-making framework. Effective data can be crucial in leading you to making the right decision, but never forget that in the end, leadership is always about judgment, and you need to balance what the data is showing you with what the other sensors are telling you of what's really going on. By combining data with your judgment, you can ensure that you drive performance in your organization. So this takes us to the end of module four. And again, we can build on our master diagram of how to lead. We started with the green star of purpose, and then we brought together the right people and organized them. And then we created the right, the right plans as represented by the light blue arrow. And what we can think about in terms of performance is that we're enabling each individual to perform to their maximum capability. And that's what the small blue arrows represent. And we can start to see how this diagram shows what the challenge is of leadership, because you need to make sure that all these different elements are coordinated effectively. You need to make sure that purpose lies at the heart of the organization, that you've got the right people in place, that the people are well organized, that there's a clear plan as represented by the clear blue arrow, the light blue arrow. And then you also need to make sure that everyone's performing individually as represented by the individual blue arrows. 